Hi brother teacher here. This video is for men and even women. Uh, and it relates to loss of hair on your head and how to how to potentially grow your hair back. I did say that. Okay. Now let me preface this video by saying this. I'm not a medical doctor. I'm not a scientist proper. I'm not uh, a dermatologist uh, or a skin expert. But what I am is a living, breathing human being, a living organism, as you are. And I am a studied, I'm a learned, and I am a self-taught individual in a lot of respects. So you may want to take a page from this particular book, mine, and start teaching yourself certain principles and concepts as it relates to your own personal lives. So that's my uh, disclaimer. I am not a medical professional and you don't have to be a medical professional to use common sense. You don't. And what I'm about to share with you here briefly, I know to be factual. It is the truth because I've experienced it. Now, understand this, comprehend this. There are some situations that this may not work for some individuals. Depending on what your pre-existing condition is or has been or history as it relates to your skin. Uh, be it alopecia or some other medical issues or pre-existing conditions that you've experienced medically that won't allow you to grow hair. In this particular video, I'm talking about people who have uh, excessive oily skin on the top of your head and clogged pores or what some might call sebum plugs. First of all, we have oil glands throughout our entire bodies. There are sebaceous glands on your scalp. Okay, they secrete oil to keep your scalp moist, soft, and subtle, and your hair flexible, pliable if you will, soft as well. Now, when those sebum plugs are on your scalp they inhibit the growth of hair once again you have oil glands sebaceous glands on your scalp when they get clogged your hair can't come out so that's one of the main reasons we lose hair because your hair can't grow because your follicles are clogged up. Doesn't that make perfectly good sense? So now, if you relieve your scalp of those plugs or those clogged up pores, doesn't it stand to reason that your hair would begin to grow again? It wants to. So now, you just have to make the conditions appropriate or adequate for your hair to regrow. Now, don't get lost in the shuffle. Please pay attention to everything that I said from beginning to the end of this video. So now, look here. This is a rough illustration of mine. This is a person's head. Uh, I've exaggerated the picture. I've exaggerated the circles here being, the circles here are representative of pores in your scalp. Of course, they're much smaller than that and you can't see them. So now, these are the pores. I divided it in half. These little extensions here are representative of your hair growing out of those same pores. Hold a second. I'm gonna take this marker here, the yellow highlighter, and I'm going to cover those pores up. 
So we will make this representative, this color yellow, this highlighter here, of, can you see that now? So that yellow color now represents clogged up arteries. That's the sebaceous glands that are clogged. So if this is clogged, your hair cannot come out, as I said before. So now, I'm a witness. My hair was standing in the top. Some can say it's hereditary that you're losing hair, you know, uh, uh, because of your grandparents, uh, grandfather and your father and so forth on their side of the family and so forth. But what were their behaviors like as it related to their hygiene in their head? So most of my life I've had oily skin. I've grown a lot of hair back. This was thinner than this. Do you see the hair here? It was half that size in length uh, about a year ago. And when I would wash my hair, I could take my fingernails and scrape my scalp and clean out excess oil that was resting on my scalp. So that is what was prohibiting or inhibiting my hair from coming out growing out that is so now what I'm saying to you is this you need to wash your hair on a more regular basis you make the determination how often you're going to wash your own hair but don't wash your hair aggressively every single day because you have to have oil on your scalp it's necessary you don't want to strip your head of oil completely. It's like washing your hands too, too much and your hands are always dry. You're supposed to have oil in your body because your body is subtle, subtle if you will. It's supposed to be flexible, pliable and so forth and not dry completely because you're going to open up a window to some other issues health wise down the road. So I would advise that you wash your hair on average about three times a week. Maybe four for some just depends on how bad your case is of uh, extra oil on your scalp. So when you wash your hair, make sure that you rinse it thoroughly and make sure that you dry your hair thoroughly because uh, bacteria breeds in dark and moist places that are warm as well. On your scalp, if you don't dry your scalp very good, guess what you're breeding again? Harmful bacteria. And that bacteria is going to build up extra oil and other debris on the top of your scalp. And you're going to be defeating the purpose of cleaning your scalp. So there are some people who use a hair dryer. You can do that. But don't do it more than necessary. Don't, don't over dry your scalp. Okay. Use it modestly on a low temperature and do that. Now if you can at all let it air out outside in the summertime. If it's, if it's uh, hot outside, let that happen as well but you don't want to keep your scalp moist for long periods of time. Don't want to do that. So now, after you wash your hair, I would recommend that you use uh, apple cider vinegar. Now let me make you mindful of something. When you use apple cider vinegar, it is very strong. You don't want to put raw apple cider vinegar onto your scalp because your pores are going to be open, especially after you have just washed your head. It's going to burn, and it could even scar your scalp. You don't want to do that because that's another issue. What you want to do is have a mixture of water and apple cider vinegar to cut it. Get your little spray bottle or even a sponge over the sink. Make sure that your, your whole head is saturated with that apple cider vinegar. Uh, I won't call it an elixir or product if it, it, it will become a product once you add it with water it's something different okay so water and apple cider vinegar and a spray bottle or a sponge make sure that your whole head is saturated for about 10 minutes and rinse it back out with warm water and what the apple cider vinegar does is kill the harmful bacteria on your scalp another thing that you can do is after you wash your hair let's back up a little bit the apple cider vinegar would have been your conditioner in replace of a conditioner, okay? So-called conditioners that they put on the markets. Most of them contain too many chemicals 
harmful chemicals and deodorants that you don't need on your scalp in the first place. Okay, so that would be your conditioner, the apple cider vinegar. Now prior to that, you can put baking soda solution. Baking soda is bicarbonate of soda. It kills fungus and bacteria and even some virals on your scalp. All right, so what you would do is get your bowl, put you some baking soda in it, stir it up into a paste, and you cover your whole head for about 10 minutes. What that does again, right before the apple cider vinegar uh, conditioner, what that does is kill the harmful bacteria on your scalp. And I would do this every time that you wash your head, three to four times a week, okay? After this baking soda uh, paste solution is on your head after about 10 minutes or so, rinse it out, dry it again, and then put the apple cider vinegar conditioner on it. That's what I would advise. So, my experience was that my hair was standing from about to middle lower back towards the front and it was very prominent it was very obvious that I was standing even had some comments from my children dad your head standing out you're getting bald in the top it doesn't bother me that they said that because I just thought it was just simply something related to aging and genetics if you will but come to find out that it was the clogged pores that had a whole lot to do with it too because I wasn't big into washing my hair too much but once I started to investigate the world in which I live, this body right here, and understand my body even more, I realized that I had that situation where my pores were being clogged up by the excessive oil because I've always had oily skin. And I never put two and two together until much later. And my hair began to grow. And so much so, I would have to cut it every couple weeks now because it just kind of grows a little bit crazy because... Uh, those pores that were once blocked are now free and now my hair is coming back out now I don't want a full fledged afro oh no but anyway um, I'm kind of modest I like the way my hair is at, at about this height now back in the day I was poofed out but, but that was back in the day different era time so I just want to encourage all of you all who have been perhaps having uh, hair loss issues based on clogged pores as I pointed out earlier and this this does not apply necessarily to other pre-existing conditions but remember this if your pores are, are clogged again I'm gonna take you back from the beginning if your pores are clogged okay your hair cannot be free to grow it won't come out so instead it's gonna die off at the follicle and you're gonna become bald or balding in those particular areas so what you do and start washing your hair on a re more regular basis again I recommend three to four times a week and something that preferably is not a de deodorant type of a, a shampoo if you would and uh, when you wash your hair try the baking soda uh, paste water and baking soda throughout your head for about 10 to 15 minutes let it sit and then rinse it out dry it apple cider vinegar conditioner mixed with water again for about 10-15 minutes on your scalp and rinse it out and you're good to go and your head is squeaky clean it's fresh it is free of a whole lot of the uh, debris and the excess of oil or sebum if you will and wait for the next time wash it and repeat again that was it and that was all this is from the teacher